Hello friends, welcome back to this lecture series of work integration design of structures where we are having an in-depth discussion on performance of masonry structures under the effect of earthquake force. Like and as we have seen in the previous lectures that uh, certain guidelines are issued by the Indian standard in order to ensure the sound behavior or sound performance of masonry structures under the effect of earthquake force. And in, certain, in these guidelines, one of the, uh, one of the guidelines uh, by the Indian standards or suggested by the expert is provision of horizontal bands and vertical bands at certain corners of the buildings or certain location of the buildings in order to ensure that excessive stress does not develop, right? So in the last lecture, we talked about the importance of horizontal provision of horizontal bands in the building. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the importance of provision of vertical bands in the building. So, then horizontal bands are the most important earthquake resistant features in the, in the masonry building. The bands are provided to hold a masonry building as a single unit as we have discussed and they will be acting as a box. Horizontal bands are provided in the masonry building to improve their earthquake performance. During earthquake shaking, the masonry walls are grouped into three subunits that is the central masonry, wall masonry, wall pier and the seal masonry as can be seen in the next picture. So what is going to happen is that when you are going to provide these three bands, these are, which is the plinth, ba plinth band and the lintel band and the roof band, then what is going to happen is that the height of the wall is going to get uh, distributed. And the height of the wall, when it gets distributed, it divides the entire height of the wall into three different components, which is the seal masonry, which is starting from plinth level to the seal level, then wall pier masonry, which will be between the seal level to lintel level, and then spandrel masonry, which will be from the lintel level to the roof level, right? So now what is going to happen is that depending upon the transfer of forces, what is going to happen is that uh, entire structure is not likely to be affected, only the local effect will be there. So that is why this performance, that is why the provision of horizontal bands is very, very important as we will see in the remaining slides. So what happens is that when the earthquake forces are going to act and these three four bands are going to be provided, that is the first case, right? Where the building components in which the roof band and the lintel band and plinth band are shown. So in the second figure, as you can see, when the uh, horizontal forces, that is the earthquake forces will be applied from left to right, which are shown by the blue right, blue arrow. So uh, due to the mass of the building, the inertia force be, will be acting in the opposite direction, which is uh, uh, which will be uh, shown in the other direction, right? So when these uh, inertia forces will be acting on the building, then as a result of that, the building will undergo deformation in the direction of the forces that are being applied. So as a result of that, what is going to happen is that since this uh, uh, horizontal bands are provided so as a result of that what is going to happen is that the building the height of the uh, wall is divided into three different segments so uh, whenever the possibility is going to be there the only the local effect is going to be there in the wall and the entire wall is not likely to topple for example in the figure uh, b that is there then in the figure b you can see that the rocking of the masonry piers is going to happen right the below wall that is the uh, seal masonry and the central masonry remains as it is in position, but the masonry piers that are going to be affected, right? And in the second case, you can see that what is going to happen is that the cracking of the masonry piers is going to take place. Now, why this is happening is because the horizontal bands are already provided, but these uh, elements have become weak along the vertical direction, that is the vertical direction. So, now if we can provide a system or we can come up with a system such a way that uh, just like the way that we have provided the horizontal bands, if we are able to provide vertical bands also at regular intervals, then what is going to happen is that it is going to provide stiffness in the vertical direction also. And when we'll have stiffness in horizontal as well as vertical direction, then minimum deformation will be observed in the structure under the application of earthquake forces. And that is where the role of vertical, vertical bands comes into picture. So embedding vertical reinforcing bars in the edges of wall piers and anchoring them in the foundation at the bottom and in the roof band at the top forces the slender mass masonry piers to undergo bending instead of rocking. In wider wall piers, the vertical bars enhance their capability to resist horizontal earthquake forces and delay the cracking. Adequate cross-sectional area of these vertical bars prevents the bar from building in tension. Further, the vertical bars also help protect the walls from sliding as well as from collapsing in the weak direction. So code is giving you a guideline depending upon the thickness and height of the structure, number of bars are to be provided at different junctions, which can be referred in IS-4326 and IS-1905. But here only a typical sketch is shown, which will help us to 
understand the importance of provision of these vertical bars correct so figure number a where vertical reinforcement causes bending of masonry piers in place of rock as we have seen that the portions about portions near the opening because the stiffness the continuity of the wall is not there so as a result of that these junctions corners near the wall near the openings have become weak and as a result of that the rocky compressionary piers were happening right so in order to increase the stiffness what is to be done is that these vertical reinforcing bars have to be introduced around the openings and as a result of that you can see that vertical bars are provided at the corners of the building and also at the periphery of the opening so when these vertical bars will be provided then a result of that what is going to happen is that the masonry piers will undergo uh, will undergo bending instead of uh, rocking from their faces and secondly when these bars will be uh, passed through and through to the foundation and also they will be connected at the roof level then as a result of that what is going to happen the entire system is going to behave as one system and as a result of that what is going to happen is that the cracking of walls is also going to be avoided right so as you can see the vertical and horizontal direction both will be stiffened by the provision of horizontal bands and vertical reinforcement along certain direction and as a result of that the performance of the masonry buildings will be improved usually under the effect of perfect right so other thing that we very commonly see in case of openings is that we always see that uh, diagonal cracks are there at the ends of the window or ends of the door frame right because these cracks are known as shear cracks right so these diagonal cracks can also be avoided by introduction of horizontal and vertical elements around the periphery of the walls of the around the periphery of the openings so that the stiffness is achieved and as a result of that the uh, shear cracking will not take place in the walls around the open so this is again an earthquake resistant design feature which is very important to ensure adequate performance of masonry buildings under the effect of perfect thanks for watching the video